A Very Short Life of Kierkegaard by Charles K. Bellinger. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Soren Kierkegaard was born in 1813 in Copenhagen, Denmark, as the seventh child of a wealthy businessman. His father was a self-educated man who had a brooding, deeply religious spirit. The father's pietism and philosophical interests had a great impact on his last son, Soren, who went on to become one of the most important figures in modern Christian thought. Kierkegaard was a bright student, and he received a high-quality private school education. By the time he was seventeen, he could read Hebrew, Greek, Latin, German, and French, as well as his native Danish. He entered the university where his father hoped that he would study to become a pastor. Kierkegaard was more interested in studying literature and philosophy. However, he adopted the carefree, expensive lifestyle of a prodigal son. He wrestled deeply with religious ideas. However, at the age of 25, he had a profound conversion experience. He was reconciled with his father shortly before the latter's death, and he dedicated himself to the cause of Christian faith for the rest of his life. The Kierkegaard family was deeply touched by tragedy. By the time Soren was twenty-five, five of his six siblings had died, as well as his mother and father. Soren himself did not expect to live past the age of thirty. As it was, he died at the age of forty-two in 1855. He went on to complete the prerequisites for ordination in the Lutheran Church, but he never did become ordained. Through his writings, he became a kind of pastor at large to the country of Denmark. In 1841, he earned a doctoral degree in philosophy with a dissertation on the concept of irony with constant references to Socrates. At the age of 27, he became engaged to Regina Olson, for the next year he agonized within himself as to whether or not he had made a mistake. He broke off the engagement, believing that a marriage between them would not be viable due to his personal eccentricities and his intense preoccupation with becoming an author. This engagement and its dissolution became one of the main inspirations for his subsequent authorship. Since he had inherited a large sum of money from his father's estate, he was able to embark on a career as an independent author. Between the years of 1843 and 1851, he published a stream of books which are remarkable in their number, literary complexity, philosophical perception, and theological profundity. Since he wrote in Danish, he was only noticed at first by a handful of Danish intellectuals. It was not until the 20th century that he became a well-known and widely read figure on the Western intellectual scene. His authorship can be divided into two time periods and six writing styles. The first time period is referred to as his first authorship from 1843 to 1846. The second period consists of works written between 1847 and 1855, which are known as his second authorship. The first authorship consists primarily of pseudonymous books, which were published under pen names such as Victor Eremita, Judge Wilhelm, Hilarius Bookbinder, and Johannes Climacus. These pen names were attached to imaginary authors whose viewpoints did not necessarily coincide with Kierkegaard's own viewpoint. A novelist writes a novel by imagining characters and placing them in a setting and a plot. Kierkegaard imagined characters and had these characters write books. 
An understanding of this point is crucial for the project of interpreting his writings. In his own voice, Kierkegaard said, if it should occur to anyone to want to quote a particular passage from the books, it is my wish, my prayer, that he will do me the kindness of citing the respective pseudonym's author's name, not mine. Concluding Unscientific Postscript, page 627. After publishing his work, Concluding Unscientific Postscript, Kierkegaard intended to end his career as an author hence the word concluding in the title. But at that time a satirical newspaper called The Corsair began to lampoon him at Kierkegaard's own request. As a result, Kierkegaard became a laughingstock in Danish society, and this incident spurred him on to continue writing. The books he wrote subsequently have become known as his second authorship, they are mainly religious works, published under his own name. Kierkegaard's authorship can also be divided into six writing styles or genres, or thematic subdivisions. The six categories are as follows, with a listing of the titles which fit into them. 1. Criticism Early Polemical Writings, circa 1838 the Concept of Irony, 1841, Two Ages, 1846, The Book on Adler, circa 1847, The Crisis and a Crisis in the Life of an Actress, 1848. 2. Fiction, Either Or, 1843, Repetition, 1843, Fear and Trembling, 1843. Prefaces, 1844. Stages on Life's Way, 1845. 3. Philosophy of Religion. The Concept of Anxiety, 1844. Philosophical Fragments, 1844. Concluding Unscientific Postscript. 1846. 4. Pastoral Theology. 18 Upbuilding Discourses. 1843 through 1844. Three Discourses on Imagined Occasions. 1845. Upbuilding Discourses in Various Spirits. 1847. Works of Love. 1847. Christian Discourses, 1848 Miscellaneous Later Discourses, 1849 through 1855 88 Discourses Total 5. Polemical Theology Sickness Unto Death, 1849 Practice in Christianity, 1850 for Self-Examination, 1851. Judge for Yourself, circa 1851, 2. Miscellaneous Later Writings, i.e. Kierkegaard's Attack Upon Christendom, or the Moment, 1855. 6. Autobiographical Works. The Point of View for My Work as an Author circa 1848, journals and papers, 1829 through 55. The first category contains works of literary, philosophical, cultural, and religious criticism. The second category contains works which are novelistic in character. They focus on the boundaries between different spheres of existence, such as the ascetic and the ethical, and the ethical and the religious. They often focus on the subject of marriage. They can be traced back to Kierkegaard's relationship with Regina. The third category consists of pseudonymous works of a highly philosophical character. They address the themes of original sin, the incarnation, 
and Christian existence. The fourth category includes Kierkegaard's religious upbuilding discourses. They are in effect sermons, but they are meant to be read in published form rather than preached in church. They are addressed to a general audience, and they speak in a pastoral and comforting yet challenging tone. The fifth category contains late works in which Kierkegaard analyzes and speaks out prophetically against what he sees as the spiritual bankruptcy of Western Christendom. The sixth category is made up of his remarkable autobiographical work, The Point of View from My Work as an Author, and of his voluminous journals, in which he carries on a running commentary on his life and times and the inner workings of his writing career. These various writing styles can be understood as growing out of Kierkegaard's relationships with the various kinds of people he knew. His fiction was addressed to the literary intellectuals of his day, but it also grew out of his engagement to Regina. His philosophy of religion was directed at the philosophers and theologians of his time, who were largely under the sway of Hegelianism. His pastoral theology was intended for a general audience. His polemical theology was directed to the leaders of the state church, bishops Minster and Martinson. There is also a sense in which everything he wrote was addressed to God. Thus his authorship reveals the intricate nexus of relationships in which he lived. This nexus of relationships is well illustrated in the volume Encounters with Kierkegaard, edited by Bruce Kermpsey, which contains all of the extant accounts of Kierkegaard by those who knew him. During the last months of his life, Kierkegaard carried out a relentless verbal attack on the state church in Denmark, which he judged as having departed from the path of genuine New Testament Christianity. He finally collapsed one day in the street, was carried to a hospital, and died about a month later. His older brother Peter, the only other surviving member of the family, went on later to become a bishop in that same state church. Note, I am sometimes asked, if I want to read something by Kierkegaard, where should I begin? I consider The Sickness Unto Death to be his most important book. In my opinion, it has no equal in the modern world as a work of philosophical anthropology. Its companion work, Practice in Christianity, is also very important. Generally speaking, the works in the pastoral theology category are very accessible to lay persons, and they express Kierkegaard's own viewpoint most clearly and directly. A good place to start is with works of love, or upbuilding discourses in various spirits. The first part of this latter work has previously been published in English under the title Purity of Heart is to Will One Thing. Its translator, Douglas Streer, said this, As a devotional classic, the 19th century produced almost nothing in either Catholic or Protestant circles that can compare seriously with purity of heart. Relatively short, accessible works about Kierkegaard include the following. C. Stephen Evans, Soren Kierkegaard's Christian Psychology, Walter Lorry, A Short Life of Kierkegaard, Grigor Melanchuk, Kierkegaard's Way to Truth. End of A Very Short Life of Kierkegaard by Charles K. Bellinger